Hi, my name is Dr. Brian Curtis, and I'm one of the paleontologists here, Fossil Crate. And today I have the amazing pleasure of introducing you all to the incomparable Lindsay Davis. Lindsay is a paleontologist out of North Carolina, and I'm just going to hand it right over to Lindsay to introduce herself and let us know what she's up to. Take it away, Lindsay. Thank you. <laughs> um, I'm Lindsay Davis. I am a undergraduate student at Meredith College in Raleigh, North Carolina. I'm originally from Lovettsville, Virginia, though. I always have to mention that. <laughs> um, I have experience working with bats, um, paleontology. I especially love to do science communication, especially on social media. That's kind of my passion right there. And I love museums. I love going to museums, working with museums. I've had an internship at the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences. So a lot of what you'll see from me is at that museum. I've visited there since I was a child and it's been a huge part in my um, paleontology experience. So what got you into paleontology? What's your origin story? Like so many paleontologists, I've just loved it since I was a kid. Um, I remember going to the museum in Raleigh since I was maybe seven, six or seven, and they had this amazing um, exhibit with this huge astrodon for an like a seven-year-old child, it was just this huge sauropod that I could not believe that there were animals that, that were that big at some point. <laughs> um, and as well in that exhibit, there is the Acrocanthosaurus skeleton. It's the most complete skeleton of Acrocanthosaurus in the world. So getting to see those two incredible animals right there and at such a young age was so special to me. And it stuck with me through my whole life, like through elementary school. I loved like taking biology. I loved learning about geology. I remember collecting rocks whenever I could <laughs> when I was like 10 years old. Um, and just through high school and everything, I was always so sure that I wanted to do something with science. I wasn't totally sure that it was paleontology, but I knew I wanted to be a scientist. Um, I have loved astronomy, I've loved marine biology, <laughs> lots of the really typical sciences that people love. Um, and then in college, I didn't really know that people could take classes in paleontology. I didn't know that was a thing. And then I was kind of looking through the college course list and saw this class that was about dinosaurs. And I was like, oh, okay, let's do that. <laughs> so I signed up and ever since then, I've been trying to do everything that I can in paleontology. That is awesome. That is amazing. Can you walk us through the kind of research you've been up to? Yeah, definitely. So in that specific class, I was able to participate in a group research project, a student research project where we studied um, kind of how the animals that were around in Thailand in the Mesozoic. Um, so I got to help present on that at a poster session, which is really awesome getting to do that my first semester. <laughs> and then right after that, I got to go on a dinosaur dig to New Mexico, which was amazing as well. Very tough for sure. I, um, I always knew that they were gonna be really tough, but you don't really know how hard it is until you actually experience it. Um, and right before that trip, actually, I got to go to Costa Rica for three weeks to study bats, um, which was amazing. <laughs> I never knew that I was gonna love bats so much. They're, they're, they're such a taboo around bats that, um, you know, there's people that are scared of them. There's people that are afraid of rabies and the like but bats are so special. And I did not realize that until getting to study them like that. That's tremendous. There's so much to unpack there. Let's start with the bats. I mean, Walker's Mammals of the World gives bats their own volume. There are lots of bats. I don't think people appreciate how wildly diverse and successful they are as a, as a group of mammals. 
And was there anything in particular that you took away from looking at the extant taxa like fats and applying it backwards to paleo? Definitely, yeah. It really helped me to see just the diversity of them. There's so many different kinds of bats. There's bats that eat fruit. There's bats that um, eat insects. There's bats that eat blood. <laughs> and so it was really amazing to see you know, how bats live in these different ecosystems and how they all um, are able to get different things from those ecosystems. And especially in a tropical environment like Costa Rica, I, there's such a diversity of life there. It's amazing what kind of animals and plants you can find there. So I think it's really amazing to go to some place like that, especially when you're from North Carolina, where there's not nearly as many animals here as much <laughs> you know, wonderful animals like that. You know, there's sloths, there's so many cool things there. Um, and so it really helped me to gain a greater appreciation for animals and to think, wow, these are the animals that are alive today. I really want to study more of what was alive millions of years ago because they were some pretty incredible animals back then. Which takes me to New Mexico. Are you looking forward to going back out in the field? Definitely. I'm hoping to go this summer for the field season um, in just a few months. Um, so that would be incredible to get more experience and also learn more about um, animals that aren't just dinosaurs because most of what I've learned about has been dinosaurs that is what I'm most interested in but I'm really excited to learn more about you know animals from the Permian and other time periods. That is awesome and New Mexico is such a great place for dinosaurs and you've got your Permian and Triassic beasties if you want to get into the archosaurs, the, the, the whole battle of dinosaurs, mammals and the crocodilomorphs, it's all in those rocks. Definitely, yes. <laughs> Good selection. So as you've gone through your paleo research and you've looked at bats and you're, you're working on dinosaurs as well. Um, where do you think you're going next? What, what do you think the future holds for you? Oh, gosh, I don't know. I <laughs> really anything that I can find in this crazy world we're living in right now. I just accepted a position as a museum educator um, at a historic park. So it's much more recent history. But <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm also very excited about some potential opportunities to work with a zoo. Um, I love animals, so any experience with animals would be incredible. I love zebras, giraffes, elephants, especially African animals. <laughs> As you can probably guess, I think that they're amazing. So working with them would be awesome if I can't find something paleontology related. That's fantastic. So you talked about science education. I, I would love to hear more about the education projects you've worked on and the groups you've worked with, if you don't mind. Yeah, definitely. So on my Instagram account, I only created it about a year ago, something like that. And I have been able to kind of take the pictures that I've taken at museums and Kind of just creating my own things. I mean, even with something like this, I can take this and create a whole post about it. And you would never guess just from this little stuffed animal that you could make a whole scientific post about it. But that's something I've really been working on, um, trying to kind of bridge the gap between you know, just the ordinary person who loves science and wants to understand it more. And the scientist who knows these big concepts, but don't always, you know, know how to um, explain what it all means. So I've been really trying hard to work on that. And um, I've made some incredible connections through that. I've done several videos with this group of women that, um, 
I've become friends with. We've done videos to kind of um, reach to the younger audience as well. And that's been incredible for sure. And I've also been able to talk to some children as well about paleontology and what they can do when, when at their age. <laughs> what has really struck me is the responses that we've received from moms and dads, direct messages as well as public posts thanking us for featuring women in paleontology. So it is so nice to be able to feature uh, you on our site and for all the young women, men too, but the young people in the world that can see, here's someone who's doing it as a role model. And your social media feeds are fun. They're smiley. They're happy. They convey that excitement. So talk about your social media, the different channels you're using and, and which ones you really want people to go check out if you have a preference. Yeah, definitely my Instagram account. That's the one that I've spent the most time on. I've tried to dabble in Twitter, but it's not quite as fun for me. I love Instagram because pictures are really what I'm passionate about. I love photography. I love having my picture taken. So um, Instagram is really what I focus on. And with pictures, I found that people love pictures. They love to see scientists in the lab or at the museum, anything like that. They love getting to be a part of it in that way. So I think Instagram is really, really important for that. That's fantastic. So do you have any advice to anyone coming up to the paleo ranks that would like to become a paleontologist? Definitely. I think it's so important to just not give up. There are so many things that might be thrown at you that might make you think maybe this isn't for me, but if you have that passion inside of you, you can't be stopped. You know, there's so many opportunities out there. It might be hard sometimes. It really can be finding a job or something like that. But at the end of the day, even with something like science communication, I'm still able to be a part of paleontology in that way, even just through Instagram. It's not a paid job or anything like that. It's just a way that I can be, um, you know, be able to experience paleontology. I think it's so important to reach out to people. You know, if you have a local museum and you want to be a part of what they're doing there, don't be afraid to email them and ask them what opportunities they have. It's so important to just put yourself out there. And it might be scary sometimes to, you know, to do that. You know, if you lack that confidence sometimes or if you're just nervous, that can be hard. But people will really, really appreciate you going that extra mile. Well, that is fantastic advice, and it has been an absolute pleasure speaking with you today. Thank you so much for carving time out of your evening because of the time change, and uh, we're looking forward to continuing to, to stay in touch with you and featuring your work, and as you go and work your way through the world of paleontology, we can't wait to hear any updates from your if you get a chance, if COVID, COVID willing, if you get a chance this summer to go out and uh, explore New Mexico, and heck, if you get into Arizona, please let me know. We'd love to show you around the Arizona Museum of Natural History. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much, Lindsay. It's been a great pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, you're welcome. Thank you kindly. Adios. Thanks.